Hey everyone, it's Rachel. Today we're going to go over one of my absolute favorite things to play on guitar, and also one of the most essential things you need to know if you're interested in playing rock and metal music, and that is the power chord. In this video, first I'm going to cover what a power chord actually is, then I will show you the two most common ways to play power chords, and finally, I will let you know some tips to keep in mind when you are playing and practicing power chords to keep them sounding awesome. So to start out, what is a power chord? A power chord is a two note chord consisting of the root and the fifth, and it is super commonly found in rock and metal music and also found in other genres as well. So for example, this right here is a G power chord. Power chords get their names from the root note that you're playing. So you're playing a root and a fifth. And in this case, the note I'm playing is G with my index finger. So this is a G power chord. If I were to move the chord up here, it would be an A power chord because this note right here is an A. Now you really don't need to know any music theory to play power chords and you can just memorize the shapes we'll get into in a moment and move them around the neck. But if you're curious where the second note comes from, it is the fifth note in the major scale starting at your root note. So if you're playing a G power chord as we played earlier, the fifth note in the G major scale is a D, which is the second note in the power chord. And you can get to that note by running through the G major scale to the fifth note. So one, two, three, four, five. So this right here is a D, and that is the same note. That is the second note in our G power chord. And this will hold true wherever you are playing a power chord. It will always be the root note and then the fifth note in the major scale starting at that root note. So if you're looking at an A power chord, it would be A and E. Pretty cool. Power chords being played all over the neck, which is super nice because you just memorize one shape pretty much and you can play it wherever you want, but they are most commonly played with the root note on the low E and A strings. Power chords are most often found in rock and metal music where you're using a distorted guitar sound because normal chords that have more than two notes can get a bit muddy, but power chords sound really powerful and clear. So now let's talk about the two most common ways to play power chords. As I mentioned before, power chords consist of two notes, the root and the fifth and all you have to do is choose where you want your root note and I'll play it here again. And then the second note will just be one string over and two frets up. So you have the shape right here. I've always personally preferred to play my power chords with my first and third fingers like this, but if it is more comfortable for you, you can play the second note with your pinky. I just recommend doing the third finger one because it makes the next shape we're about to get into a bit easier, but totally up to you. Whatever works best for you is good. Now it's totally okay if this is a bit uncomfortable at first if you haven't played power chords before. I know that it can be tricky at first and took me a while to get used to, but just work on it and try moving it around and you'll get a feel for it really quickly. You'll want your fretting fingers as close as they can be to the frets to make it easier to hold down the notes. Your middle finger doesn't need to do anything. It can kind of just be in a relaxed position, just kind of hanging out like this. Once you have that shape down in one position, it'll be good to start moving it around the neck. As I mentioned before, you can move the power chord shape anywhere with the root note on the E and A strings and you'll have awesome sounding power chords. So it will be a good exercise to try moving that shape around, moving it to the A string as well, and just getting a sense of how that sounds and how it feels to shift between positions. Most rock and metal songs will have you moving all around the neck with power chords. So it'll be really important to practice moving the shape and getting used to keeping your fingers in that formation so it's easy to switch between positions quickly. If you have any unwanted noise coming out while you're playing your power chords, don't worry. I'm going to talk about how to deal with that in a moment, but first I wanted to show you the second popular way to play power chords and the way that I typically play them. So the second most common way to play power chords looks like this. And as you can see, I'm using my pinky now, as well as my third and first fingers. This way of playing power chords gives them a bit more of a full sound, and I personally enjoy it and use it most of the time compared to the two finger power chord. So you have something like instead of something like subtle difference, but it definitely sounds a lot more enjoyable to me, but it kind of depends on the song and the context for which one you'd want to use. Now you may be wondering now why there are suddenly three notes in this form of the power chord when I said there were only two. It turns out that the third note you're playing, the one that you're playing with your pinky, is actually the same note as the root note, just an octave higher. So for example, if you have a G power chord in this form, 
you have three notes, and the note played by your pinky is the same as the root note, so they're both Gs, just this one is an octave higher. And adding that octave just gives it a full sound, but it's still just two notes. It's still just the root and the fifth, just also including the same root note and octave higher. It's totally up to you and oftentimes situational, choosing which sort of power chord you want to play. You can do either the two finger or three finger one. They sound pretty much the same. I just oftentimes will prefer the more full sounding three finger power chord that includes the octave. But if the two finger one is easier for you and you want to start with that, or if you think it just sounds better, totally okay, you can go either way. To play this sort of power chord, all you'll have to do is start with your original two finger power chord shape like this, with the index finger on your root note and your third finger one string over and two frets up. And then you'll want to add your pinky finger on the next string over from your third finger and on the same fret, like this. It's definitely normal and totally okay if the shape is uncomfortable at first. It can be tricky getting your pinky finger close to your third finger to be able to play the shape and get comfortable moving it quickly around the neck. But if you just practice it, practice getting the shape down and practice moving it around, you'll have it down in no time. If you've chosen to use your first and pinky finger for the two finger power chord shape like this, then adding the octave will be a bit more tricky because your pinky will need to play both the fifth and the octave. So by resting across both of the strings like this, and I find this a bit tricky because you'll have to have that strength in your pinky to bar down both of the strings and it'll be a bit trickier to move around. So that is part of why I recommend using the first and third shape for your two finger power chord. To practice your power chord shapes, you can definitely just play them and move them around the neck, trying to shift between the E and the A string roots and just get used to doing that. But another great thing to do is to find a song that you like that uses power chords and then work on learning that. Since power chords are used in basically all music that uses distorted guitar, like rock, metal, and punk, there are so many songs out there across all levels of difficulty for you to learn that use power chords from many of your favorite bands like Nirvana, Metallica, Green Day, basically any band you can think of that plays distorted music will use power chords and I'd recommend finding a song you love and then trying to learn it to practice your power chords. Or even to start with a popular riff like the one from Smells Like Teen Spirit, just something that you enjoy and that will motivate you to practice and you'll get your power chords down really quickly. One thing worth mentioning here is that if you're moving the power chord along the E string, so like this, you don't actually need to fully lift your fingers off of the strings to get to the next position. And instead you can kind of just slide them from position to position and this will help to reduce noise and make it a bit easier. As you can see there, I'm not really moving my fingers off the strings, I'm just sliding to the next position I need to be in to play my power chords. You can also do this the course of moving the power chord along the A string. But if you're moving between strings like this, You'll just have to make sure that the notes are properly muted as you're moving and that nothing rings out. So now that you have the basic power chord shapes down, let's talk about something that you should try to keep in mind when you're playing power chords to make them sound the best they can, and that is muting. So when you're playing a power chord with the root note on the low E string, you only want to hear the first three strings. You don't want any sound from those other higher strings. And when you're playing a power chord with the root note on the A string like this, you only want to hear the notes from the second, third, and fourth strings. You don't want to hear anything from the high strings or the low string. Now, while you could just be really accurate and only hit those three strings, when you're playing power chords, you're usually playing them pretty aggressively and you don't want to have to worry too much about what exactly you're hitting on the guitar with your picking hand. And even if you were perfect in your playing and you didn't hit any strings other than the three that you're intending to hit, you might still end up with some noise if you're playing with a distorted guitar. So when you're playing a power chord to get rid of the noise from the top three strings, what you'll want to do is mute them with your first finger. So when I'm playing a power chord, as you'll see here, my first finger is always relatively flat across all the strings and it isn't holding down anything other than the first string. It is just resting on the other strings in order to keep them muted when I am playing the power chord. So you'll see here because I am resting my finger across the higher strings and muting them when I play the three higher strings that I don't want to ring out, they are muted and so they don't ring out when I play the full power chord and I don't have to worry about hitting them or doing anything like that, they're just muted and taken care of. If I wasn't getting the muting down, it would sound something more like 
which is not what we're going for here. This muting and rusting your finger across the strings this way might take a bit of time to get used to if you haven't done it before, but just something to keep in mind if you're hearing any ringing when you're playing your chords. Also, when you're playing a power chord with the root note on the fifth string like this, you'll also have to worry about muting the low E string because you don't want that sounding out when you're playing your chord. Otherwise, it would sound something like versus which is what you want. So for muting the higher notes, in this case, the top two strings, you'll use the same idea where your first finger will be resting across the frets and muting them so they don't ring out when you play the full chord. But for muting the low E string, what you'll want to do is rest the tip of your index finger against the E string here so that it is muted when you are playing and you don't have to worry about avoiding hitting the E string. So when you're playing power chords, your first finger will be doing all the heavy lifting with regards to muting. It will be resting across those higher strings to mute them so that they don't ring out. And if you're playing a power chord with the root note on the A string, it will also rest against the low E string to make sure that it doesn't ring out when you're hitting those chords. Again, it is totally okay if it's hard to get this down at first. Muting definitely takes some time to get used to, but it is a good thing to keep in mind and work on when you're moving forward with your practice, just so you can make sure the chords are sounding as clean as they can. Once you get the muting down, it's also just super fun to play power chords without having to worry about extra noise ringing out. You just hit the chords hard and not have to worry about it because your index finger is doing all the muting. So now to close it out, just a couple of other small things you might want to know when learning to play power chords. As I mentioned before, you can play them all across the neck. You don't have to just focus on the E and the A strings. It's just that the E and the A root note power chords are going to be most common, but you can play them on other strings as well. They just sound a bit less powerful. Also, one thing to keep in mind here if you're experimenting with moving power chords off of the E and the A strings is that if you have a power chord with the root note on the G string, and the second note on the B string, the second note will actually be three frets up from the root note like this. This is just because of how the guitar is tuned. You probably have noticed before that things get a bit funky going across the B string. And this isn't very common to use power chords like this, but I have seen them in a couple of songs, so thought I would mention it. But other than that, the shape stays the same wherever you're playing it. Also to note, if you're looking to play an E power chord, you might want to play it like this. It's really the same shape, just in this case, the E note, the open E string is the root. So the fifth is actually the second fret on the A string, and then the octave is the second fret on the D string. So you have this. Just something to keep in mind if you need to play a low E power chord. Another similar thing is that up here, you can play an A power chord like this where the A, the open A string, is the root note. In this case, you'll probably also want to mute the low E string, and I tend to do that with my thumb like this. But you can also play that same A power chord up here. It just depends on the song and personal preference. So those are all my essential tips for playing power chords, and if you just practice the shape and moving it around the neck, you'll have them down in no time, and you'll be able to play tons of different songs. Power chords are a ton of fun to play and you can do so much with just the one simple shape once you get used to it and you can move it across the guitar. If you've already been playing for a while and have your power chords down, definitely leave a comment down below with your favorite beginner friendly power chord based riffs so that we can all check them out. I'm sure it would be really cool for people who are new to learning guitar to have a repository of riffs that they can learn and learn from. If you have any questions about playing power chords, also definitely leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a ton of fun playing power chords and I will see you in the next video.